We receive most of the information about the world around us through our eyes. Our eyes are specially designed to provide us with information about depth, distance, size, motion, and color. Moreover, they are capable of moving up, down, and to both sides, giving us the widest possible field of view. The human eye can be compared to a digital camera. The front wall of the eye acts as the lens system of an objective. A lens is a curved piece of transparent material that refracts the light rays passing through it. The pupil is similar to the diaphragm located behind the lens. By dilating or constricting, it regulates the amount of light entering the eye. The inner lining of the eye, or the retina, is a light-sensitive matrix, like in a digital camera, on which the image is focused. In reality, the eye is structured far more complexly. While digital cameras simply record an image to a file, humans and animals are able to recognize the information that reaches the retina and act based on what is seen. The fact is, the eye is connected to the brain by the optic nerve. This nerve is located inside a special extension attached to the back wall of the eye. It transmits the signals received by the retina in the form of impulses, which are then deciphered by the brain. Each eye sees objects from a slightly different angle, sending its own signal to the brain. From a very early age, our brain learns to merge both images so that we do not see double contours. The superimposed images allow us to perceive the volume of objects and see that one object is in front of or behind another. This phenomenon is known as three-dimensional imaging, or 3D. Furthermore, the brain allows us to correctly distinguish between up and down. As light refracts when passing through the lens, it leaves an inverted image on the retina. Our brain reads this image and instantly flips it right side up. However, a newborn initially sees all objects upside down. The human eye is shaped like a sphere. In the center of its anterior part is a slightly convex transparent layer, or the cornea. It is connected to the white of the eye, or the sclera, which covers almost the entire outer surface of the eye. The sclera is covered with thin membranes permeated by tiny blood vessels. The cornea is the first lens through which a light ray passes. It has a fixed focus and never changes its position or shape. Beneath the cornea is the iris. In Greek, this word means rainbow. Most often, irises are blue, green, or brown. In essence, the iris is a muscular disc with an opening in the center. This opening is the pupil, through which light enters the eye. The space between the cornea and the iris is filled with a transparent substance called the aqueous humor. Behind the iris is the second lens, or the crystalline lens. It is much more mobile and flexible than the cornea. A whole network of fibers, called suspensory ligaments, holds it in place. The lens is surrounded on all sides by ciliary muscles, which give it various shapes. For example, when you look at a distant object, these muscles relax and the lens increases in diameter and becomes flatter. When looking at a closer object, the curvature of the lens increases. Behind the lens is the inner chamber of the eye, filled with a gelatinous substance called the vitreous body. Light must first pass through this substance before it reaches the retina, the layer that covers the back and side walls of the eye's inner chamber. Rods and Cones The retina consists of 130 million light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. Rods are sensitive to light, but do not distinguish colors, with the exception of blue and green. Cones capture all colors and help us see more clearly but they cease to function in insufficient light. This is why our vision weakens at dusk. We distinguish colors less effectively and see everything in blue or grayish-green tones. The French call this time of day l'heure bleue, or the blue hour. Blinding light. In very bright light, the rods shut down, leaving all the work to the cones. As the light dims, the rods reactivate, but this does not happen immediately. When you enter a dark room from a sunlit street, your eyes only gradually adjust to the darkness, and when you step out into the sunlight, you are momentarily blinded. 
Cones are concentrated in a small pit in the back of the retina, while most rods are located around it. This pit is near the exit point of the optic nerve, where there is a small gap in the retina. Light rays do not affect this area, which means that in the back of each eye, there is a tiny blind spot. Eye movement. We typically see best with the central area of our retina. So to get a good look at an object, we turn our eyeballs or even our entire head. The eyeball is held in the eye socket by six muscles, which provide it with considerable freedom of movement. Our eyes are protected from injury by a whole set of defense mechanisms. They are securely hidden in bony eye sockets lined with soft fatty tissue. In the event of a fall or impact, the eye socket is more likely to be damaged than the eye itself. From the front, including under the eyelids, the eye is covered by a continuous transparent membrane, or the conjunctiva, which protects its surface and bathes it in tear fluid. Why does pupil size change? The pupil is the opening in the center of the pigmented iris. The iris controls the amount of light that enters the eye through the pupil. In very bright light, it constricts, and the pupil shrinks to the size of a tiny dot, allowing only a small amount of light into the eye. In dim light, it relaxes, and the pupil dilates, allowing more light to enter. The pupils can also dilate when you are overcome by a strong emotion, such as love or fear nearsightedness and farsightedness. Among the most common vision disorders are nearsightedness and farsightedness. Nearsighted people have difficulty seeing distant objects, while farsighted people have trouble seeing what is up close. These vision defects are almost always caused by the shape of the eyeball. For vision to be perfect, the eyeball must also have a perfect spherical shape. However, in nearsighted people, the front-to-back diameter of the eyeballs is elongated, and in farsighted people, it is shortened. If you are nearsighted, you cannot see distant objects clearly because the light rays reflected from them focus before reaching the retina. This occurs if the eyeball is too long or if the angle of refraction of light rays in the lens is too great. Concave lenses correct nearsightedness by straightening the light rays so that they focus precisely on the retina. If you are farsighted, it means that close objects appear unclear and blurry. When the eyeball is too short or the lens refracts light weakly, the rays reflected from a nearby object do not have time to focus on the retina. Nearsightedness and farsightedness are easily corrected by wearing glasses or contact lenses. Modern surgical methods also allow for the effective correction of these conditions. Astigmatism. The shape of the eyeball can affect vision in another way, causing astigmatism. It usually occurs along with nearsightedness or farsightedness. The curvature of the cornea walls should be the same everywhere, like on a soccer ball. But in some people, the cornea is more like an oval rugby ball and their eyes cannot focus light rays correctly. Glaucoma and Cataract Glaucoma is an eye disease in which the volume of aqueous fluid in the chamber between the iris and the cornea increases, causing pain and a rise in intraocular pressure. Vision deteriorates, and if glaucoma is left untreated, complete blindness can occur. A cataract is a clouding of the lens which makes the patient see the world as if through a frosted window. Cataracts develop slowly and do not cause pain. They are removed by destroying the lens with a special ultrasound probe. The removed lens is replaced with a miniature plastic lens. Cataract Surgery Two surgeons remove a cataract using an operating microscope which provides a highly magnified image of the surgical field. A very fine beam from a helium neon laser passes through the pupil of the human eye. It cuts a tiny hole in the clouded lens so that light can once again enter the eye. Stereoscopic vision. In cinema, it is important to achieve a three-dimensional special effect by separating the image for each eye. In modern 3D cinemas, this is most often achieved with polarizing glasses, 
which filter the light differently for each eye. The brain, receiving two slightly different images, combines them into one, creating a sense of depth and volume. Optical illusions. Color blindness test. What number do you see? People with normal color vision who can distinguish all three primary colors, red, green, and blue, will see the number 74. People with red-green color blindness, the most common type, cannot distinguish red from green and will see the number 21. Blind spot detection. To find your own blind spot, sit at arm's length from the screen. Cover your right eye with your hand and look at the cross inside the circle with your left eye. Keep your head parallel to the screen and slowly move closer or farther away without taking your gaze off the cross in the circle. At some point, you will stop seeing the cross without the circle on the left. This means its image has fallen exactly on the point where the optic nerve attaches to the back wall of the eye. That is the blind spot of the retina. You can do the same with the other eye as well. Primary colors. White light can be obtained by combining three colors, red, blue, and green, which are called primary. Did you know a person blinks once or twice every 10 seconds? Each blink lasts about a third of a second. This means that over a 12-hour day, you spend about 25 minutes blinking. Newborn babies do not blink at all and start doing so at around six months. We cry when we are upset, but no one really knows why. While crying, we often have to blow our nose because excess tears flow into the nasal cavity through tiny openings inside the eyelids. Cars in the diet really do help you see better in the dark. This is because vitamin A, which carrots are rich in, helps the rods in the retina function more effectively. For eye diseases, it is also useful to eat cabbage and other green leafy vegetables. The human eye can distinguish up to 10 million color shades. However, unlike insects, humans cannot see ultraviolet light. Our eyes are a true miracle of engineering created by nature. They give us the ability to learn, create, and love. This priceless gift deserves our gratitude and care. Do not forget the simple rules. Give your eyes a rest from screens. Protect them from the bright sun. See the world clearly. Notice the beauty in every day. And may your gaze always be directed forward toward new discoveries. Thank you for watching. Stay curious and see you soon.